Hey, what's up? It's me. We'll be looking at Strange of Paradise beta footage that I took uh, last year. I was meaning to make a video about it <laughs> with my commentary and my thoughts, but I didn't quite get to it, so it's time to fix that. So, the game is coming out soon again. I was like, yeah, if I'm not going to do it now, I'm never going to do it. So I want to get this video out because this is the mission... Okay, let me get to the script. The background footage is me doing the last side mission in the beta, where you fight the both bosses back to back from the beta, after fighting through like several waves of enemies. Pretty standard side mission for a game that is going to be structured exactly like Neo. I'm gonna be comparing the two games a lot. It's quite unavoidable, and for my money, that's a good thing. For those that do not know, both games are made by Team Ninja, so the DNA is omnipresent, ranging from like level design, UI elements, the feeling of controls, and straight up some reused animations from Neo. If you played Neo, you already know Strange of Paradise is gonna be legit good time. But if you're like me, after playing both Neo games, you might be thinking, is it just Neo 3, but like in, with Final Fantasy reskin? And thankfully, that is not the case. I myself did not want another game to be exactly like Neo. I was looking forward to Team Ninja trying something a bit different, because Neo 2 would be very hard to improve upon. The game already has like a million systems, so it's getting a little bit bloated as well. I personally thought that Neo 1 was amazing as it was, so seeing the iteration in Neo 2 was really surprising and welcome. Also, it's fantastic seeing a first proper action game with Final Fantasy setting or themes. And no, I, I don't think Dirge of Cerberus really counts as either a proper action game or a Final Fantasy game. I'm sorry, but I really don't think so. Neither does any other game you might be thinking of, but you are you're free to make your case in the comments. I'll read it, and if you're reasonable, I will reply to it. Again, we're really thinking about proper action games, you know, like freaking Dragon's Dogma, Devil May Cry, Bayonetta, what have you. The Dark Souls, Neon. Those are action games. And with some RPG elements. So, think about that. Now, the key difference between this game and Neo, as far as I can judge it based on the beta, Strange of Paradise is designed and balanced for party play, which to me is disappointing, because I definitely prefer doing things by myself. The AI of the partners in the beta was really weak, and as a disclosure, I played the beta on hard mode, and after the first mission I tried to run the rest of the beta solo. I would actually gauge the hard mode balancing to be similar to Neo NG++, which is the dream or way of the demon. Which is where the go those games get really challenging due to the amount of damage you take and the various other things such as extra modifiers on some enemies that they gain. Running it solo made things extremely unforgiving and progressing through zones was really, really slow. I would not suggest anyone to play like this. It's really not that fun. I really would say that. The trash mobs are many and they are lethal. Pulling smaller packs was also not really possible or let alone individual enemies, because of the level design. It really like funnels you in tunnels, and the bigger areas usually have like one really strong mob and two other weak mobs, but they still take way too long to kill on hard mode by yourself, so it's just really dangerous. I could tell that I was not supposed to play the game like this. With the bosses, uh, it's a bit different. You had to play it really cleanly, though. It was very satisfying, but again, the bosses, they're a bit more manageable than the mobs, than the trash mobs, but still. The space you are given to cast spells, or rather, <laughs> the space you are not given, because you're the only one who's getting aggro and the enemy's attention, it's, it, gets, it gets really rough. I was playing Red Mage and a Mage dual job, and I basically never had time to cast any big spells with, like, decent cast time. I was just popping regen every now and then, and then I was relying on my physical attacks and skills. I don't really want to describe the entire battle system, Th there was a lot going on. There's like parries and staggers and dodges, and then the active skills and the job switching, there's a lot. I'll only say that it feels very good and responsive. 
When I died, I knew that I messed up. You can see in the footage how it flows all together. It did have some spaces where the general flow could be improved, but if it stayed the way it was in the beta, I would be okay with that. Like for example, I think the job change could be a bit swifter, and like more responsive, and the element wheel, when you're casting stuff, could use some sort of lock function, because the slightest tilt of the right analog stick would change your element and you're kinda, you're kinda bummed. So that would be a nice quality of life. Another thing that's quite different and in line with the Final Fantasy motif, enemies have ability names that pop up, you can see it in the game, in the footage. I find this very helpful and on brand with the RPG side of things. It helps identify attacks and how you need to deal with them. Also, I'm noticing this enemy is Lahamu, or Lahamu, which is one of the, like, the first tough bosses in SMD5. That was, that's interesting. One ra other random observation I made when re reviewing this footage is that one of the Red Mage attacks, like attack skills, looks a lot like Paladin's Royal Authority animation from FF14. So that's cool. But anyway, this, these are my plans for the full game. I'm gonna play on the hard mode, but for like mission progression and through the trash mobs, I'm gonna use one party member because like having two other party members, I thought it was way too cluttered and the, the areas just, it was a whole goddamn mess. So one person should be okay. And for the bosses, I'll always send them away and do them solo because as, as frustrating as it could be in the beta, it really felt like I was able to learn what the game wants me to be doing, and by the end, I was exhausted, but also very satisfied. I've been trying to dodge promo footage they've been releasing, but what I did see were things like the samurai job having Meikyo Shisui ability, which is nice. So that's another ability reference from like Final Fantasy XIV. So I expect many nods to various Final Fantasy games, and it's gonna be a lot of fun spotting them all for the first time. I'm pretty sure that with all the RPG systems and the forging and everything, there will be many totally bonkers and broken builds. And with the multiplayer, I'm pretty sure people are going to blast through the game within a couple days. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to take it hackingly slow and enjoy every second exploring every nook and cranny. A couple tidbits I want to mention about the game that makes me pretty happy about uh, the state of the game, or the production rather. The main character is voiced by Kenjiro Tsuda who you may know from Xenoblade 2, who vo he voiced Zeke, and in Tales of Zestiria, he voiced Zavid. Also in SMT5 recently, he voiced Koshimizu. So he is a very distinct and badass voice. Very cool for a protagonist of Final Fantasy, you know, you don't really get that often, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. And last but not least, the music is done by Naoshi Mizuta with, and a couple others which means it's going for the Final Fantasy XIII Lightning Returns and Final Fantasy Mobius vibes. And, in small part, Final Fantasy VII Remake. The music that we got in the beta was already pretty damn good, and I expect the full game to be full of great bangers. Also because the fights have the same sound mixing as Neo 2 did, which means that the phases of bosses and transitions are going to be very seamless and they're going to heighten the intensity of combat beautifully. Feel about sums it up. I had a blast with the beta, and I'm very much looking forward to the full game. It's a bit unfortunate that in the West, this game is just like that chaos meme, and people generally have no clue about Neo because nobody really played it, or they have some sort of opinion that they heard some content creator make, and now it's their opinion. So this game is probably not gonna make a huge splash here, you know. But that's all right. If you know, you know. We will enjoy this game for its strengths and presumably for a long time. I am hoping that Strange of Paradise will have NG Plus cycles similar to Neo, which would give the game a huge longevity with smart asset reuse. I've also heard something about raids, but we'll see about that, I suppose. Action RPG multiplayer combat is kinda janky as far as I'm concerned, because if you wanna be dodging things and boss keeps randomly targeting different players with no designated tank, it can get really messy and frustrating real fast. You know, whenever I think about like Monster Hunter and games like that, it can get really just you know, annoying. I'm not holding my breath for that kind of thing, but you know, if it's soloable, heck yeah, I'm in. You bet I'm in. There's been plenty of raid so raid type challenges in Neo 1 and 2, and you can do them solo if you're like really masochistic, it's possible. Or if you're using some super broken build, I guess. 
But I guess that's it. That's all my thoughts on this. Well, most of them anyway. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of the footage. Excuse my language if I'm salty. It's been a long stream, that one. And I was at the end of my rope. Cheers. Kurwa do picie! Holy fuck! And that shit's so fucking quick. Attacks better. Oh. Got him! Slow and steady. Crush this motherfucker into the ground. Woo! That was fucked up. Ugh. Did we got a fedora out of this? Hell yeah.